So today we are going to discuss a shortcoming of the online disassembler and how to get past it. So we're going to be working in the intro to reversing binaries directory with the file fnames. Okay, so you can type ls fnames, make sure it's there. And let's real quick do an object jump on it. Object jump minus j dot text minus d minus capital M intel fnames. And just scroll up to the main. And you're going to see something here. See how whenever you have a call, it shows you call the address of where it's jumping to. And then in these brackets, it actually tells you what function that is. Puts at PLT. Don't worry what PLT is. It's called the procedural linkage table. And puts is the actual name of the function. Now, having the name of the function that's actually being called is extremely helpful because many of these functions, for example, here we have, where is it? Scanf, right here. We can actually find out through the man page and learn what scanf does, what arguments it takes, what it returns, and what it does. And that gives us a whole lot of context into what the program is doing. Because when we know what the function is doing, well, that helps us as well as, well, we know the arguments of the function. So we know, when we know the calling conventions, we know what the, as the arguments are, in this case, pushed onto the stack, we know what those arguments actually are. For example, scanf, let's take a, let's do a man page on that. Scanf takes a constant care format string. So we know that before they call scanf, the last thing we push is this. So we know in this case, we know that is actually a string. If we learn what we push before this, whatever EAX is, that's the second argument to scanf. So we can look up the scanf man page and find out what that is. Maybe it's an integer, maybe it's, I don't know. And that actually gives us context. So whatever EX was, which is actually the memory address EVP minus 10 hex, we know what kind of data is being stored there. And that gives us a whole lot of context. So why are we looking at this? Well, because I want to use the online disassembler. However, the online disassembler doesn't actually give us this actual useful information. As far as I know, I've send an email to the maintainer of the online disassembler, a um, friend of his. I, I pointed this out, so hopefully he'll get back to me and see if maybe that's a feature that will be added soon. I know they're working on adding a lot of features. So, but let, until then, we have a way of, of dealing with it. So, the online assembler is not going to give us this information, which is really helpful, but we can get that information from ObjDump and actually enter it into the online disassembler. So, let's keep this, this open here and then let's open our online disassembler window and click start disassembling and I'm going to click file upload file I'm going to choose intro to reversing I'm going to choose binaries and F names click OK and then we're going to go ahead and click the syntax style to Intel if you like AT&T, you're, you're certainly welcome to use AT&T format. Click OK. And let's go ahead and click on Main. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a little wider. OK, so here we have Main. And let's look, let's compare. So on the obj dump side, we can see that main starts at 804, 84BB, same thing here, okay? And the first instruction is LEA, load effective address, into EAX, the address of ESP plus four. And you see the instruction is the same. So all these instructions are the same, but, and they should be because they're the same binary, 
But look at our first call. Our first call here just says call func and then the address of the, of the function that's getting called, 08048380. But here, obj dump actually says call 8048380 and then put s. So we know that this is actually puts. And it would be very helpful when we look at the online disassembler because we want to use this nice, these nice features uh, where we can add comments and look at the graph view. So we want to be able to add those. We want to, put, we want to add that. So I'll show you how to do that. So I can click on the first call here. It ends in 80. 80. I'm going to click on that function. And then I'm going to go here, unknown function, 8048380. I'm going to add create edit function, and I'm just going to change the name. And I'm going to leave the address there, but I'm just going to actually put puts, because that was what the function was called, puts. Right? And I'll leave the address, because it's just nice to know that. I don't really need to know it. But, and then it changed it to unknown puts. So let's click back on main. And now you see, we have, rather than saying just, you know, function at the address, we now know it's puts. And everywhere else that call happens, it's puts. So through all the binary, all the code, anywhere something calls puts, we now know that it's calling puts. And that's really helpful. So we can actually do this for each of the functions. So let's look at the next call, which happens on this line over here. Call function 804838A0. So let's find the next one here, and that's scanf. So let's click on this, and that ended in A0, so here it is. Let's create edit function, and let's just call it scanf. Click back to main, and do we have any more calls? We have call down here to, oh no, that's put s. We don't have any more calls that are unlabeled, I don't think. Nope, so now all our calls are, oh no, here, here we go. Is it still in main, are we still in main here? Yeah, we have call over here to function 8048370, which is stack check fail. So we can go ahead and, and click on that. And now I believe we're done. In all of Maine, we now know what everything is. So that is, as I mentioned, that is one of the disadvantages of the online disassembler is it doesn't automatically label the functions that it knows about with names. But we can use the information from ObjDump to go ahead and do that. And if you wanted to, to make it a little faster rather than going through all this like that, we could write a script that just goes through and finds all the calls in main and just puts them out to a list so we don't have to manually go through, okay, here's the next call, here's the next call. We just write a script to do that. All right, so now we were able to get past the, the, the one disadvantage that the online disassembler has and just fill in those blanks, those missing function names with the information we have from ObjDump. So now we have this nice graph view and all the other features of the online disassembler and we have the function names. Very cool. That's all for today. Thanks. Remember, if your organization needs training, we provide in-house classes. Check out our website, www.paladingroup.com.